I'm Yvonne Okwara Matale and this is the big story tonight. Parliament resumed its sessions today after a month-long recess. The National Assembly will, however, take another break beginning tomorrow to allow members of Parliament to constitute constituency development fund committees. The break is also expected to give the opposition coalition NASA time to forward a list of members to be included in various House committees. Before they went on recess, NASA legislators had been directed to boycott parliamentary sessions as a protest to the current regime. NASA has only three weeks to submit the list, after which Jubilee members say they will carry on with house business. These events unfold on the backdrop of a divided house. The current parliament has witnessed some not so honorable scenes. If I would be the 11th parliament and divisions seem to fuel up on just about every motion. So what is the role of parliament in fostering national unity, especially at a time like this? Can the house redeem itself even in the face of current national crises? That is a conversation we're having on the show tonight. Justin Muturi uh, gave an indicator that he has received a number of memorandums which he was not in a position to execute him from the order of the House because we do not have uh, the relevant committees in part. Let us put away the interests of our party that we support and put the interests of Kenyans together so that we can come together, form, so form committees, so that we can continue to discharge our duties to Kenyans as members of parliament and as a house, as a whole. So it may seem like we have a deadlocked National Assembly at such a critical time in the country. So on the program tonight, we'll be speaking to Member of Parliament for Ugunja Opio Wandai and his Kimilili counterpart Didmas Wekesa. Also, we'll be getting some historical perspective with Wanyeri Kihoro, the former Member of Parliament for Nyeri Town, as well as our lead reporter, Sophia Wanuna, who joins me now from around the precincts of Parliament. Sophia, good evening. Let's talk about um, the intrigues that have been witnessed since this 12th Parliament was constituted. Good evening, Yvonne. Following the 8th of August presidential election and the members of the 12th Parliament being elected and being sworn in, with the NASA leaders opposed to that presidential election, arguing that this uh, government, as then had been elected, was not legitimate, contesting the same in the Supreme Court, successfully so, they then decided to boycott sessions of Parliament and, more importantly, not to submit members uh, to constitute committees of parliament but you will remember Yvonne following that election as debate was rife and even after the Supreme Court announced the presidential election President Uhuru Kenyatta on the 12th of September went ahead to officially open a joint sitting of parliament both houses as the National Assembly and the Senate and of course at the time the narrative or sentiment from the National Super Alliance is that he was a caretaker quote-unquote uh, president he did not have legitimacy, so they did not attend that joint sitting. However, it went ahead, Yvonne, and it was not challenged. So as we stand, you have National Super Alliance members of Parliament elected in their various parties that are under that coalition uh, that have decided to give a wide bath to those committees of Parliament that are critical to business, the various functions and mandate of the both houses of Parliament. But they say because they do not recognize uh, this government, and even now we have another petition challenging the re-election of President Uhuru Kenyatta that they will not participate. But however, Jubilee is adamant that whilst in the 11th parliament they had tyranny of numbers, that num those numbers have just gone to even more uh, increase, if you like, in, in this uh, 12th parliament. And so they argue if they choose not to participate, they will continue with their agenda as to how feasible this is. It will be one of those we'll wait to see how it plays out, Yvonne. Yes, indeed. But even with amidst the division, uh, this parliament has been able to transact some business. 
It has, Yvonne, been able to transact some business, business that has received criticism. Remember those amendments to the election laws following the annulling of the presidential election by the Supreme Court? The Jubilee wing of the National Assembly of Parliament, in essence, went on to then come up with proposals to amend the Elections Act. And in their argument, this was to cure the issues raised by the Supreme Court majority judgment in annulling the election. And you'll remember, Yvonne, this was criticized across the board. The international community, religious organizations, the civil society groups, politicians, even if some would say some of the issues those merit to change or perhaps amend, the timing was one that was not uh, seen to be in good faith. And so Jubilee discouraged to do that. However, we saw in a, one of the most expeditious moments of power Parliament, the publication of that bill being brought down for that for, from that 14-day period of time that usually is uh, for publication of a bill to just one day. And then after that, uh, both houses of Parliament, Senate and the National Assembly conducting joint hearings uh, for this bill to be able to get uh, public views on the same. Notable uh, those hearings were that these sittings were only attended by members from the Jubilee Wing and those affiliated to the Jubilee Party of have expressed support uh, for the president's uh, party. And then this went back to parliament, they were passed and uh, forwarded to the president. Now, when President Uhuru Kenyatta was declared president, in his speech he said that he chose not to assent and sign this uh, bill into law, but because of operational of law, the period of time expired because he'd never signed yes, but he also did not return. Uh, this proposal to Parliament uh, with amendments in a memorandum, which is what should happen in the event the President was not satisfied by this law. So, in essence, on one hand, saying he did not sign because there were people opposed to the same, but these laws are now official, just awaiting gazettement, and they will be applicable to the next election. So this is some of the things we've seen that even though opposition boycotted, was not party to that process of the uh, change to the election laws, we now have them as law. And that is just to continue to rubber stamp and say that they mean business, they will go on no matter what. Yvonne. Yeah, and and um, so at least we've seen, you know, that activity, no matter how uh, controversial it was deemed to be. But there's a lot of other important matter. I mean, there are many other important matters that are before the House. You know, I mean, they've, they've got a full entry. Could you talk to us a little bit more about that? Yes, they have a full entry. And you know, one of those uh, balances, these members at some point, at least to the nation, will need to clearly stipulate or show how they're balancing it out because they are elected leaders. They need to be able to still represent the people in the House. But at the same time, NASA is keen to express their disapproval of the manner in which this House is constituted. But one of those elephant in the room kind of scenarios for the uh, both houses in the two two-thirds gender rule. Article 81B of the Constitution highlights uh, this requirement that not more than two-thirds uh, of any members of elective public office should be from the same gender. Now, this came into uh, enforcement, of course, with the 10th Constitution. It was promulgated. However, after that, the 2013 uh, Parliament, that's the 11th Parliament, came into office. They were unable to find a mechanism, a framework by which uh, this law and this requirement would be operationalized. That is yet to happen even until this point. For P Parliament has failed so far. This is a matter that has been litigated upon, Yvonne, across uh, various of our courts, including the Apex Court, the Supreme Court in the land, even going ahead to give advisories and even give timelines by which this must be uh, met so that we do not have a scenario where uh, Parliament is deemed or found by the same court to be illegally constituted. And so whilst there have been promises and even the president time and again has called for parliament to be able to come up with this mechanism to operationalize this law, one would argue he's called for the members to do that, but he also has the numbers. So 
if this was really a priority, then perhaps we would see faster, more expeditious movement, as we've seen with other matters that were deemed and seen as priority for the ruling coalition. So whilst there have been many and numerous proposals around the two-thirds uh, gender rule, in this parliament, uh, everyone, all eyes of Kenyans will be keenly watching to see Will they finally be able to figure out how to maneuver or will we have a scenario where Parliament is found to be unconstitutional, which would trigger a crisis? Yvonne. Yeah, that's right. Quite a bit uh, for the National Assembly to do. Thanks for that. Sophia Wanuna, who's our lead reporter here on the show, just setting the stage and giving us uh, a bit of background to this 12th Parliament and what they've managed to do so far. So let's get into it with members of this 12th National Assembly now. And let me let me remind you who we've got. Didimas Wekesa, who's the MP for Kimilili, and Opio Wandai, representing the people of Ugunja. We'll also be speaking to Wanyeri Kihoro, former member of parliament, Nyeri Town, in just a moment. But first to you, gentlemen, naturally with you, Opio, is where I'd like to begin. For how long do you intend to go with this boycott? Well, uh, before I come to that question, you need to understand the genesis of the current uh, crisis that we find ourselves in as a country. Uh, and this can be traced to the event of 8th of August, when an election was supposedly held, which election was bungled terribly by the IBC in connivance with the Jubilee, and which election was eventually uh, overturned by the Supreme Court. So what happened then is that parliament was constituted and given the configuration of that parliament, and I'm talking here about the National Assembly specifically for the time being, given the configuration of that National Assembly, uh, it was clear that it was hell-bent on working to support an executive which was uh, irregularly or legit legitimately in office. And that's why we decided, as members of the NASA, to give this National Assembly a uh, wide berth uh, until uh, and, un and unless the crisis that the country finds itself in is resolved. Of course, a lot of water has since uh, passed uh, under the bridge. You know, uh, Yvonne, that uh, uh, since the Supreme Court did order a repeat of the presidential elections, the IBC failed to put in place mechanisms to allow for such an election within the dictates of the Constitution and applicable laws, and therefore, NASA withdrew from that charade of an election. And uh, therefore, as we speak, we are back to where we were uh, uh, on the 8th or slightly uh, uh, after the 8th of August. And our position still remains that we shall continue to give parliament a white bath. In fact, we, members will continue to make technical appearances for obvious reasons. But then we insist that the crisis that the country finds itself in needs to be resolved. Historically, in this country, Parliament has not been very helpful. All right, Moshimiwa, yes. uh, allow me to ask you just a few questions. We'll get to the in in just a moment. Yeah. So, first of all, you say that members of NASA are there making a technical appearance. We understand that to mean making sure you are in there and that you continue to earn your salaries every month. Uh, well, to talk about salaries is to look at it in a very simplistic manner. You see... Would you put it? Uh, yeah, it's simply because we are having a bigger issue here. And we know the well, if you're going to boycott, why not just boycott? Well, why are you making technical appearances? Well, we all well, know why that is. Well, boycott here basically means not participating in any business of the house. Okay. Okay? And that you can do, even if you, you walk in and get out. You can chew gum as you scale the stairs. Uh, but that's, not, that's yeah. not what members have paid you to do. Well, um, the voters in Ugunja have asked you to go in there I, and perform the functions I of the legislature. I have just said that that will continue until the national crisis is resolved. And our position is that this crisis cannot be resolved through parliament alone. It calls for certain extra parliamentary uh, measures. Okay? Okay. Uh, and yes, that is important to understand, yeah. All right. So until what happens exactly? Well, you know, we have a dispute. As we speak, the August 8th election was annulled by the Supreme Court. As we speak, you know there was something uh, uh, done on the 26th of, August, uh, of October which we did not recognize as an election for the Republic of Kenya. The matter is already in court. We do not know what will be the outcome. But regardless of the outcome, our position remains 
that since the election of 8th August was annulled, there was no subsequent election conducted as per the dictates of the Constitution. And therefore, the crisis we find ourselves in is so huge that trying to, try, trying, trying to, 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 make, to make it appear small is basically doing injustice to the country. All right. Yes. Didymus, what are your thoughts uh, surrounding this boycott? They say they will carry on uh, faulting uh, you know, the presidential election and what they term as a sham election. What do you think? I think, Yvonne, uh, if you look at parliament now, 70% of the members of parliament are new. And we were brought into their house to serve the interest of uh, very many Kenyans. Kenyans are suffering now. We have uh, children who are unable to do their exams because of lack of school fees. And uh, the only hope that they look after is CDF bursaries. As we are speaking now, most constituencies have not received money. Most of our CDF committees have not been approved by parliament yet. So I think when you are driven by the bigger picture, that the people who are supreme that needs to get services from you are the people who have been benefiting from CDF funds. These are the people who have been benefiting from government services. They have no any other alternative. So if you are guided by what I've just said, then you will see the need to carry out your legislative duties in the National Assembly as opposed to doing it either in Kibera or anywhere else. And uh, I'm happy that uh, my friend Opio has confirmed that uh, they only make technical appearance uh, to ensure that uh, you know, they continue to be members of parliament, to continue earning a salary. But most Kenyans are not privileged like him. If they do not work today, they will not get anything for their family to eat. If they don't get bursaries, then their children will be unable to sit for their, for their exams. So when you are, there are two things here. Either you are putting the interests of the people who voted for you first, or you are putting the interests of your party first, depending on which comes first. But I think as a member of parliament, what we need to do and we will do is that uh, even though they have requested for 21 days to provide names for the various committees, we will wait for them. But after 21 days, I think Kenyans need to move forward. Okay. We will constitute <laughs> committees. The law is clear. Opio? You know, I even wonder why they're waiting for You know, for the law days. is very clear about, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, I'm uh, the law is very clear about how many, you know, okay. uh, how many names that uh, the minority party will provide, and uh, the majority party will provide. All like right. we did Didymus? previously before, uh, in the interest of this country, we have to move forward. Okay, Didymus, let's hear from Opio. Yvonne, I'm wondering why my friend and colleague, uh, and his colleagues, are waiting for 21 days to elapse. You, you know, they could as well go ahead and constitute those committees, if they think it is proper. Because, Yvonne, you must realize, that uh, this parliament, the 12th parliament, started on uh, wrong footing when the Jubilee side went ahead and constituted the House Business Committee. You know, in parliament, the House Business Committee is the committee mm -hmm. that generates business for the House. Yeah. It's a committee that prioritizes the agenda of the House. And it is very clear understanding orders of both National Assembly and the Senate that that committee can only be constituted with membership drawn from both sides of the divide, both sides of the house. They went ahead in blatant, in, in blatant evolution of the standing orders and, but purported, to be fair, and, Opio, and purported to constitute To be it. fair, Opio, yes. you, you had already said you were boycotting the sittings in parliament uh, for the reasons that well, you have just well, uh, well, cited not too long ago. Before even the announcement for boycott well, came through, they had gone ahead and constituted the House Business Committee at the very first sitting of the house. In fact, in fact, that was actually the first, the, 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 the first seed that was sown, which was, going to, which was going to bring problems to the running of the House. And therefore, and therefore if you constitute a House Business Committee irregularly, against the, against the Constitution and against the standing orders, then everything else that you purport to do in the, that House is illeg illegal and is irregular. All right. Okay, let's hear from Didmas. Was that bad faith on the part of, of, of Jubilee to constitute the House Business Committee without um, including the minority? 
I am very surprised by the comment that my good friend is making. Like, uh, he has disowned their own letter, which they wrote to the speakers of the two, uh, you know, houses. They wrote a letter and they said that we give them uh, three weeks to bring their leadership, their names of their leadership in the, in the, in the assembly. Now he's saying, uh, why are we waiting for these one days? I think, I think uh, maybe speaking from the point of ignorance, and I understand because he's not the party leader, he's not the chairman of any party, and maybe he's not aware of uh, what his bosses are doing. Now, two, you see the standing orders are very clear. It's the role of parliament to make, to constitute uh, committees. And when we are constituting committees, I think it uh, is uh, every party understands. If you are a minority party, you know how many names you're supposed to submit. The majority party also understands how many names they're supposed to, sub to, to submit. And also, the parliament is a, is a house of procedure. We work based on the quorum. So if we meet the quorum and other people have not attended, I mean, the business continues. We move forward. You know, you know Yvonne, Yvonne, of course, it's unfortunate that my friend there <laughs> can have the temerity to refer to me as ignorant. While he's just a few weeks old in parliament, I need to teach him a few things. But then, that's beside the point. Uh, you must understand, Yvonne, that following, following the constitution, which, is, which was illegal, of the House Business Committee. The only other business that that parliament purported to have conducted was the enactment of the Election Laws Amendment Bill, okay? Which bill, as you realize, went to State House and stayed there until the time frame which is allowed elapsed. And it's supposed to have become law. As we speak, that bill or that act of parliament will not stand the test of time because of the manner in which it was enacted. And in the fullness of time, it's going to be annulled by a court of Okay, so, gentlemen. So it is clear, it is clear that what Jubilee is purporting to do in parliament is illegal, is irregular, is, is something which is against the interest of the country. But All again, right. the let, more let important, ask, the more important this, thing, Yvonne, gentlemen, as I conclude, yes. the more important thing is that if Jubilee continues to bury its head in the sand and assumes that there is normalcy or that some normalcy will return, then I can tell you they are in for a good shock. Okay. Yeah. Let me bring this back to perhaps what Didymus was talking about, the bigger picture, which is the fact that, uh, you know, the National Assembly um, and the executive and the judiciary are all arms, uh, three arms of government that are supposed to be, uh, you know, independent of each other. None is supposed to be above the other. So when there are issues at the executive with respect to um, the election, and it is your right, uh, Opio, to, to challenge the re-election of uh, President-elect Uhuru Kenyatta or to challenge the process by which that was done, but then that there is also this core function of legislation, of oversight, of budget-making procedures, and of representation, first and foremost, which is perhaps the most important. Where does that fall? Is it possible, do you think, to be able to carry out that function at that level, at the same time disputing what is happening at the executive? Yvonne, there's something which uh, many people don't seem to be realizing, is that the country is in a crisis. And we have not even challenging any election. Because as far as we are concerned, there was no election on the 26th of October. So we are not concerned about that, that so-called election on the 26th of October. But what we are saying is that Parliament, as currently constituted, is not adequately equipped to address the crisis that the country finds itself in. And that is why, if you have been keen enough, you must have noted that we have called for the constitution of the People's Assemblies which will incorporate members of parliamentary governors and representatives of all shades of opinion. As we okay, speak, um, yeah, just, yeah. Uh, just like some clarification, because you said parliament as currently constituted is not capable of that. What do you mean as currently constituted? Are you taking issue with uh, the election of some members of parliament? Do you think that was not done properly? If so, there are petitions before the court, are I there not? I mean that parliament, by its very, very uh, initial uh, acts, has portrayed itself as a body which is willing to prop up an executive which is legitimate. And therefore, it cannot serve the interests of the public. And that's why we have called for the formation of people's assemblies, which will incorporate members of parliament and other people representing various shades of opinion. Beginning this week, the county assemblies will be discussing, will be debating this motion to constitute, to, to form the people's assembly. 
That, that will, that, will that people's assembly include members of parliament yes, from yes, the Jubilee yes. coalition? Yes, yes, yes. And in fact, it will depend let's, on... Let's hear from Didmus then. No, Didmus... Before, you let, before you let him speak, yeah. I wanted to say that, uh -huh. Yvonne, we are living in extraordinary times. And extraordinary times call for extraordinary measures. The sooner we came to that resolution, the better for us. Yes. Okay. Didmus... Um, People's Assembly that will include members of National Assembly, including Jubilee members. Will you be a part of the People's Assembly? You know, we have a constitution, and uh, the only body that is mandated by law to legislate, pass laws that will affect public policy is the National Assembly. The People's Assembly, we already have the Bunga and Mwanaingi that uh, they do their sittings around City Hall. But as to whether what they discuss, what do they pass, I don't, I'm not sure if they discuss and pass bills. And even if they pass, I'm not sure who will sign them into law and who will implement them. So what we are saying here, Yvonne, is like if you are in a house and uh, you think the house is burning, uh, this house has children and some other electronic equipment, so the, in terms of priority, what you are supposed to save are the children. So what, we have, what is happening in this country now, we may have a few uh, legal challenges that require interpretation, but we must save the Kenyans first. And the only way to save Kenyans is to have a functioning parliament and uh, other arms of government as well. We must pass the laws. We must constitute committees in place so that they can begin to prosecute yeah, petitions okay. that we, the parliament is receiving Didmus, from uh, Kenyans and other institutions. You know, Didmus, and moving forward, Yvonne, but not forming a people's parliament that have no role in the constitution in this country. Yvonne, if you allow me. Yes. You know, that, that mandate my friend is talking about, that the constitution gives parliament and other organs of government, is mandate which is delegated by the people under Article 1 of the constitution. And because the people delegate that mandate, they can take it back if they feel that that mandate is not being exercised in a manner that serves their objective interests. Okay, that, that, your point yes. is made on that, Didmas. I wanted to ask you this, yeah. because on the converse, um, what NASA is accusing the Jubilee side of is, is bullying and, and the pushing of the tyranny of numbers. I mean, we've had a number of senior politicians, even within the party, saying, you know, we will attain a supermajority and would therefore be in a position to even make amendments to the Constitution if we wish. But there has been a sense, even from the 11th Parliament, that there's been this waving of the flag around about, you know, the tyranny of numbers and that there doesn't seem to be a cohesive sort of approach in terms of seeking consensus uh, to finding a solution to this issue. Didmus, what will it take uh, for, for you and, and perhaps members of, of the Jubilee side to just come together? What's the middle ground for you or is there none? Before I come to your question, I want to say this, Yvonne. Mm -hmm that uh, if NASA have decided to form the People's Assembly, then there is no point of them burdening Kenyans' uh, taxpayers by receiving salary. Let them resign. Let my friend Opio Undanyi resign as a member of parliament of uh, representing uh, in the National Assembly and uh, join the, maybe it should be the People's, uh, uh, join the People's Assembly. Because there is no point of you drawing your salary. You have parliament as a platform to use to serve your people then you have said that the people are going to take back that mandate, that powers. Then you continue, and then when, how are you representing them? So what they should do is that uh, he should resign in his position as a member of parliament for Uguja, and then join the people's parliament, uh, as opposed to just burdening the Kenyans, drawing salaries, and then you are okay. saying that the people have taken back All right. uh, that mandate which they have given him. Okay, Didmus, please answer Two, my question. We have a minute before we not, take a break. Not really... <laughs> It's not really about uh, tyranny of numbers. You know, it's, uh, that is an illegal term. The best term to use is a majority party. <laughs> and uh, we never, we never uh, go to the majority through illegal means. <laughs> Kenyans voted. Uh, if themselves, they bungled the nomination processes and the people left them uh, to join other parties, including Jubilee, and we won, then they should blame themselves for being minority party, for lack of internal democracy of their political parties. So what is going to happen is that uh, we have a constitutional provisions that there must exist a majority party 
in yes, the minority yes, party. But, but did must, I and think when that we is, are in the National must, Assembly... Did must, I think that is well understood in our constitution about a majority and a minority and, and, and the, the membership within the House. With respect to my question, is there any middle ground? And I'll be asking the same of up here when we come back from the break. But from your end, is there middle ground? Because the National Assembly would perhaps be the only place where we'd hope to see some sort of cohesiveness uh, in this country at this moment. Yvonne, we are not bulldozing anybody. We are not misusing the majority of the numbers that we have in the Assembly. If themselves they are making technical appearance, what else we can do? We will continue debate issues that are, as they, they are tabled in the, on the floor of the House, and we move forward. What I would want to ask my brothers is that let them come into their chambers, let us discuss issues that affect the Kenyans, let us reason together, and we get a common ground. Okay. But Understood. we cannot reason with people who have decided through their meetings in Kibera, in All meetings right. in Madare. I mean, okay, how Didmas, do you reason with those kind of people? Didmas, I want us to take a commercial break right now. Didmas uh, Wekesa MP, Kimilili and Opio Wandai, the Member of Parliament for Ugunja. Gentlemen, stay with me. We're taking a short break. When we return, hopefully we'll have Wanyeri Kihoro, who's the former Member of Parliament for Nyeri Town, to just have some outside perspective. And we also want to talk about the role of this National Assembly at this very moment in the country. Could this be the house that we could look to for leadership in this very divided moment in our country. All of that when we come back. <laughs>